Hello everyone and good morning. How are you doing today? Hopefully you guys have had a wonderful day thus far. I am, this is my intro video. Don't know really a lot about what I should be saying, but I can tell you some things that I do know. So I am Vanish Nana. Uh, I named my channel Nana because I am a Nana. I'm a grandmother, abuela, whatever you want to call it. And I choose the term vanish because it's like, you know how you're hungry, kind of hungry, but not really hungry, and you end up being like snackish, you just want to snack on something? So, I call myself Vanish Nana because I'm living as though I'm in my van already. I'm not quite in the van, I'm living in my truck. However, all the same things that I would do in my van when I get one, I actually do in my truck. So, a bit of history about me. Is that I've been a truck driver for the past seven years. It was before the world ended up in sick bay, I'll call it. So when the world ended up in sick bay, I closed my authority, I got off the road, and I homeschooled my grandchildren. And during that time, I was able to complete some things. I wasn't driving big rigs over the road, and I love traveling. So one of my main goals was to get back to driving after things got a little back to normal. So. Now here we are. Things are not back to normal, probably ever won't be. However, the schools are open and the grandbabies are back at school now. So I want to go back on the road. At the time, I got ready to go back on the road. When you're a truck driver, you have to adhere by something called DOT physical. So when I went to take my DOT physical, my doctor alerted me to the fact that uh, something was going on with my iron. So I needed to stay local, needed to take care of my iron, and so I am still local and taking care of my iron. Until then, I decided that I wanted to get a van and live in a van. After that, I still desire to go back on the road with the big rigs. That's my love. However, right now, um, I am preparing to try to purchase myself a van. Even when I go back on the road driving big rigs, I'm still going to live out of a van. I love traveling. I love seeing the world and seeing things. And I just enjoy the whole thrill of it. Going to different places. I guess kind of like a nomadic lifestyle, you, should, you could say. So, I'm in my truck currently. And I've been in my truck for three months now. And so it's pretty good. I am so enjoying myself. Uh, when I get the van, it'll be the same thing. I'll just upgrade to a bigger space. Uh, yeah, pretty much. And uh, then as I said, once I'm able, maybe in a year or so, to actually go back out on the road and drive big rigs, when I come back to my home state, I will be coming back to my van. So that's a little bit about me. Being a Nana is an exciting task. I can enjoy the grandkids and send them home when I'm done. I don't have to deal with the preliminaries of anything else that I had to do with as a parent. I was a single mom of three boys and that is a job, but we made it. And so, yeah, it's pretty enjoyable. Um, my main goal now is to, I have a storage. When I was on the road, my stuff was in storage. When I got off the road to do the homeschooling, I started clearing out my storage a little more. And now that I'm saving to purchase a van, I am definitely clearing out my storage. There's some, a lot of things that I've sold on Facebook, things that, you know, clothes that are too big for me now because I used to be bigger and now I'm smaller. And so just different things that I don't need that would normally go in a home that I don't need. I, I'm not the traditional person. Uh, when I was growing up, I never wished for that big two-story house with the white picket fence. And I've always wanted to be a truck driver since I was about, I want to say six or seven years old. <clears throat> and what happened is, so one day my mom was, we went on a walk and I was riding my little red tricycle and she was beside me so we were almost to the stop sign we had went down to visit one of her friends or something in the neighborhood i remember along the section there was a couple of moms that she knew so and i don't remember going down there but i do remember coming back so the like the stop sign is here our house was here and we walked past the stop sign to a neighbor's house she chit chatted with a neighbor or whatever and we were on our way back to the stop sign to cross it to go to our house so as we approached the stop sign, 
I remember I'm riding my little tricycle and it's just amazing. It's amazing the amount of memories that you may have as a kid. Some things you don't remember, some things you do. So I'm riding my tricycle. <clears throat> All of a sudden I heard something rumbling, something big and gigantic and take it. I'm six or seven years old. I don't know about the world. I only know mom, dad, our home. That's all I knew. So I looked to the right of me, behind me, and I saw this big red thing rumbling down the neighborhood. It was coming. I knew it was mobile. I knew it was moving. I could see the big wheels. I could see the front of it. And I was fascinated by this big thing that was coming. So somewhere in my brain, I got the idea that I was going to race this thing to the stop sign. So as it's coming, my mom's walking behind me. At this point, I'm maybe a hair of a step in front of her. So I started riding faster, riding faster. I started racing to the stop sign because in my little head, I'm going to beat this thing. What is that? I've never seen it. I'm going to beat it. And I think I was fascinated because it was so big and because it was moving. And its wheels was bigger than mine on my tricycle. <clears throat> so... I'm racing down there. I'm holding on. I'm pedaling. I look behind me to see how far ahead, ahead I was of behind this thing that was coming. And I could see my mom yelling and screaming something. I didn't pay any attention at that point. I just needed to beat it to the stop sign. Sure enough, I beat it to the stop sign. When I got to the stop sign, I stopped and I looked to my right. And there's this big, gigantic, red dump truck at the time I didn't know it was a dump truck I just all I knew is this thing was rolling and I had to see it and I wanted to get there so I can get a first-hand look at this big thing well it ended up being the dump truck it was red and it had the dump bed on the back and the dump bed on the back is white and I stopped I looked over the driver looked down at me I looked up at him and I was awed I looked at the house that was on the other side behind the dump truck and I took note of the fact that this thing is bigger than the house, which meant it was bigger than our house, which was like two or three houses on the other side of the stop sign. I was fascinated, guys. I don't know what that was, but I was like, oh my God, something is big. I like this thing and it's moving. So I believe that is the first, my first love, my first entry point into loving tractor trailers and big rigs and things like that. And so, um, I don't remember what happened after that. I was so flabbergasted by this. The guy looked at me. He went, proceeded past the stop sign. I'm staring at him go down the road. By then, my mom caught up with me. I don't remember if I got a beat down that day or what. I'm going to have to ask my mom. But either way, I'm sure I got in trouble for that one. And rightfully so. I was, you know, doing something I should have been doing. I, you know, got a little ahead of her. The, dump truck was coming you know as a parent I can understand she's in panic mode she's thinking her kid's gonna get hit by this dump truck but in my little mind I'm gonna race this oh it's a big here it comes I like this what is this so that's like my first situation right there with a big rig and uh, I was so excited even though it was a dump truck I just didn't know ever since then I have liked gigantic things I used to collect small miniature things like uh, miniature spoons, miniature thimbles, and stuff like that. I was always fascinated by things that were extra small little replicas of bigger things. Not so much the Lego cars. I, I have a younger brother. I'm used to seeing them. Uh, not the Lego cars, Hot Wheels. Not so much the Hot Wheels, but like miniature things. And like I've seen miniature thimbles before. They are so cute. Uh, miniature like little miniature baby dolls that you'll have like on the birthday cake or uh, uh, bri bridal shower that's what it is and then I've also always loved gigantic things like when you go into some of the mechanic shops you'll see these wrenches whereas a normal wrench is about here you'll see these gigantic 18 wheeler wrenches that they use to work on stuff and it's just awesome just really really awesome when I was uh, younger I used to build like the little miniature houses and I'd put the little plates and a little teacup that you actually need tweezers to hold on to to put them inside the house just I, I don't know what it is I don't know if that was the onset of it but I've always been fascinated by things that were bigger like the Superman chair um, here in Texas there is a store a furniture store I won't name it because I don't know if I have the right to name them but there is a furniture store here 
um, that furniture store has a gigantic chair in the front of it. It's like a Superman chair. It is so awesome. As a matter of fact, I found another chair, a beach chair like that at a restaurant me and my son went to. I'll put a picture on here so you can see it. It's a huge chair, like a chair for a giant. And I have a picture and I'm sitting in it and here's little old bitty me down here in this big gigantic chair up here. It is awesome. So I don't know if that's where my uh, love of gigantic and small things occurred but I do feel like that's where my love of tractor trailers dump truck the big trucks you see going down the road that has like about eight wheels on one side and eight wheels on the other side the big windmill blades just stuff like that but my number one love is tractor trailers I love the Kenworks T uh, T660 I am in love with those I love them I love them. get another model of Kenworth if I had to but I am a Kenworth gal 100% I'll drive a Freightliner I will drive a Volvo I'll even drive a Mac or an International but the Kenworths are mine so if I uh, eventually buy a big rig it will be a Kenworth KW for short so pretty much I think the trucking might have been in my blood I have an uncle who does trucking and he still does trucking and I think it's been like maybe even probably a little over 40 years that he's been in the trucking and he has his own truck and everything and so let's see yeah pretty much that's my goal as i said before being a nana allows me to be present when i need to and not present when i don't want to so that thumbs up on that but i want to enjoy this i really want to enjoy this living out of my truck it's not a bad thing because when i there was a time to where after i drove the big rigs i started my own truck in authority and i did hot shot and hot shot is my truck you have a dually and you have a trailer behind the dually so when i did loads on the road did hot shot i slept in this very truck i'm sitting in now so it's no different it's no different at all whatsoever i have my bag during the winter i carry my sleeping bag i carry my instant pot you know i carry water on board i carry things that i need to function and so yeah the only difference is i'm doing it for long periods of time every day instead of for a week here or two weeks and then I'll come back home do laundry or whatever and then I'll go back out and live in my truck for another two weeks so it is awesome but I just enjoy my independence I enjoy my peace my solace my serenity I enjoy the right to be able to just enjoy you know that this is this is you know what grandmother possibly going into retirement stage looks like you want to enjoy and so I'm enjoying this guys I am like so enjoying this I'll make another video on places of you know where I sleep and how I keep myself safe and eventually I'll make a video you know showing you guys uh, you know my living quarters uh, my uh, studio I guess you can call it studio ram and so yeah I mean I'm so enjoying this uh, you know would I want to go back and live in an apartment or a house would I want to own a house at this point my safe answer is to tell you no. Well, I wouldn't mind owning some land so I can park on. I wouldn't mind getting like a, maybe a tiny home, but I still need a vehicle for the travels. When I want to giddy up and go across the country, I have family in California, friend in Ohio, friend in Florida, you know, family. If you, so when I want to pack up and giddy up, I don't want any locked doors. I want to be able to do that. If I'm financially okay to get that done, call me the cab I'm ready to go I'm cranking up so yeah I enjoy it like I said I was a single mom I raised my boys and yeah we had to live in units and yeah a couple of houses uh we lived in a few apartments and yeah we had to live in you know I was raising my kids and so they needed I needed to show them you know what needed to be done you know I stayed stable because I had kids yeah I would not rent anything right now I personally like the ability to be able to crank up and go where I need to go when I need to go there or where go where I need to go when I want to go there so uh, yeah that is an advantage to me not everybody it's kind of like say nursing not everybody is created for nursing you got some people that would see somebody you know needed CPR and they pass out the paramedics might pick up the both of them some people that they just freeze when it comes down to issues medical issues and they don't know what to do you know that's you could tell that's not their passion you know we've all been given our passions and things that we just really hone on and gravitate to and for me traveling and having the freedom to you know go around the world and do things is my passion so 
this life does not work for everyone as a matter of fact my uncle who i told you before did over the road now he says he says baby he says i want to get up in my bed in the morning and my pajamas he says i want to go to my refrigerator i want to go sit on my couch my kitchen table so he has traveled enough in his lifetime to where he just wants to kind of slow down right now and just be stable at home and i get that but i'm not there yet i became a mom at a young age so i was always somebody's mother and somebody's wife now i get to do me and another thing is that I've decided that I will not be one of those I wish I coulda, woulda, shoulda people. I actually have a podcast. It's called Lillian's Lounge, if you thinking about listening to it. And on one of my podcasts, I have the, one of them is about coulda, shoulda, and woulda. Because those are the main three things that you always hear people say. I sure wish I could have. I wish I would have. If, if it wasn't for this, I would have. So I decided not to be that person. I am, I don't have the proverbial bucket list like everybody else does. You know, I call it a bucket list. I haven't really written anything down um, and just technically call it a bucket list. However, I don't wanna pass on to another life without having completed the things that make me happy. So I am on journey, me right now. Um, I wanna enjoy me and other people and if what they're doing is not conducive to what I need then I need to back on up turn my steering wheel and head the other direction because it's me time so um and I don't feel bad about it I don't feel selfish about it I like I said I raised my I did what it took to be mom I did what it took to be wife I did what it took to gel everything together and make a stable foundation for my children now they are grown it is my time i do not want to again pass from this earth without doing some of the things that i want to do so do i get an idea and run for it immediately nope i'll get an idea i'll pray about it i'll do some research i'll pray about it some more and when i've really gotten that feeling hey now's the time i'm on it i'm on it and when it comes down to like being a truck driver or even van life or traveling, I mean, I was going to sleep with this on my mind. I was waking up with this on my mind. Two o'clock in the morning, you get up and you head to the potty and you're thinking about that goal. That is what you should be doing. You know, that may be your passion. You may have to research that. I knew what mine's was, so psh, I went for it. If I could have done anything different, I would have purchased my van while I was on the road, but nobody foresaw the fact that the whole world would end up going into sick bay. I'll call it sick bay. Um, from what I see from other videos, if you say that C word on here, people's accounts are being flagged or whatever. I don't know what that's about, but I'm calling it sick bay because the whole world at some point in time has been affected by this. And so, yeah, so pretty much, yeah, I'm enjoying it. I will not leave any stones unturned in my life. If I want to do it, I'm going to do it. I'm going to attempt to do it. If there's something that I want to do and it doesn't look like I'm going to be able to do it, I draw back a little bit. I look at it from another perspective. I think about it. I pray and see if this is what I really should be doing. Sometimes I should be doing this over here and I'll go over here and I'll get this part done and then eventually I'll end up back at this. You know, so sometimes you have to do preparation for this. It's a yes or a no but it's never gonna be a maybe. You always get the answer to what you should be doing. So, yeah, that's it. Um, I know a lot of videos talk about the safety of being out here. I'll address that in another video, but I do wanna tell you this. I have saw all of the states except for four of them. I am careful, cautious, prayerful, but never afraid. You know, because if it's, if it's a person's time, it's a person's time. Do I have my precautions that I take while I'm out here? Sure I do. I'd be crazy not to. However, look out for myself. I do what needs to be done. Um, we have intuition. We have gut feeling in, inside of us. If you, you're parked somewhere and you feel like you need to move, then move. You know, if you park somewhere you feel like it's safe, then stay. It's not a big, oh my gosh, I'm scared, I'm scared thing for me. And I think I think the difference is, is because I have been a truck driver. I have been out there on that road by myself in the tractor trailer and I had to figure out what I needed to do. Not, not afraid in that aspect. I have been in Erie, Pennsylvania in a snowstorm by myself 
what did I do? I found the biggest parking lot. I pulled on in there, positioned myself correctly where I was not facing the wind blowing in because it will it, it will do freeze your motor system up there. So I faced with my back toward the wind. I went in the back. I got some of the leftover gumbo because I had passed through Louisiana going up there. I got the leftover gumbo I had in my refrigerator in the tractor. I put it on into my instant pot. I cranked up some lifetime movies and I enjoyed two days in a snowstorm in Erie, Pennsylvania. I love it. I have been in some tor very close to some tornadoes eventually. I'll put those pictures on here. I have been very close to tornadoes uh, in Kansas. Um, there were 10 tractor trailers that got overturned. Um, thank God that I was a couple miles back. By the time I made it up, I saw that they had gotten overturned. I have hidden under the underpass of a bridge while the tornado was passing a couple of miles in front of me and the truck rocking like this. And I'm just, hey, you know, I'm enjoying myself. So this is what it is. I will make sure that I am content and the things that I do. I will be safe in the things that I do and I'm enjoying myself. Um, you can't keep happiness. Happiness is an emotion, but you can keep joy. And I am joyful at the things that I am doing. I am enjoying myself. So yeah, that that's me, Vanish Nana. I, uh, my agenda for today is I'm gonna go uh, to the park. Uh, got to do some writing to do. I'll tell you more about uh, me being an author. I'll tell you that later on. And so, yeah, I have some things I need to do. The library to charge my box. I use the power station box inside the truck to keep my two laptops and everything else pretty much charged up. And yeah, that is it. So, I'm excited. This is my first video. I was a little, not a little, a lot scared to make it. Because, I mean, I saw so many other people, you know, making videos. And I was like, I don't know. Do I want to put my face on video? Do I want to put my personality on video? And then maybe about three months ago, you know what? I was like, okay, no big deal. I'm going to get it done. I'm already living, you know, this life. I already have lived this on the road like this. I'm like, what's the big deal? Maybe something I have to say can help someone else. I am walking a path that I have never walked before. For a lot of people, that's scary. It's scary for me, but I don't know. I'm one of the crazy ones. I have a certain degree of bravery to where I'm like, okay, I'm sorry. That was an extra loud word vehicle. My apologies. So I have a certain amount of bravery to where I'm like, okay, you know what? I'm going to try it. If it doesn't work, I'll never do it again. If it does work, I may do it again. But either way, I can say I had that experience. So, for those of you who are kind of thinking, oh, maybe I should, maybe I shouldn't. I met a lady the other day at the emergency room parking lot where I stayed the night. She said she wanted to be a truck driver. She was driving the golf carts. I asked her why hadn't she did it already. She said, I don't know. I've been thinking about it for years. and I've talked to several people about it. My heart went out to her because I'm thinking... This lady want to do something and she won't even break the seal on monotony and go get it done. All you have to do is make an attempt. If it look like it's not going to be for you again, back that thing on up and try something else. But at least you made an attempt. I don't know about y'all, but it bothers me when there's something I want to do or need to do and hadn't done it. I will lose sleep behind it. I will wake up in the morning thinking about it. I don't know about everybody else, but that's how it hits me. That's usually how I know this is something I have to do, that I'm passionate about it because it's still up here. It's, you know, and wherever your heart is, that's what your mind is thinking. That's the way your feet, directions your feet should go. But a lot of times we stop our feet. We don't go get it done. And I gave the lady my business card and I said, hey, all I can do is encourage you. Here's my business card. If you want to get your um, trucker's license, your class A, if you want to learn dispatching, you know, if anything, trucking, just give me a yell, let me know. And if I can't fortify you in that direction, I can find somebody, uh, I can lead you somebody who can fortify you in that direction. So she took the card and she put it in her purse and it was all good. I hope she follows her dream. 
hope she gets out there and do it i know too many people and i'm sure you guys know too many people and you might be that person that keeps saying well i kind of want to but i don't know i'm gonna wait oh well we're not getting any younger so i would encourage you step out the box plan it look at it don't tarry on it too long because you might backpedal and may never get it done so all I can do is encourage you guys. I'll take you along on my adventures, especially when I get the van and I start, I'm able to actually just really go over the road and do some stuff. Definitely going to take you guys with me on those adventures. But yeah, I'm, I'm a brave little vanish Nana, I guess is what you can call me. With, with wisdom, discernment, and carefulness, I'm a brave vanish Nana. So again, I'll say goodbye. Thank you guys for tuning in this long. I highly appreciate you and leave me comments share you know subscribe and all the other things that they usually tell us to do at the end of youtube videos so i appreciate you so much and thank you goodbye Venice, and then I